This is called the Ballade de Ton de, the Ballade de Ton de Dame de Ton Jadis, the Ballad of the Ladies of Times Past. It was written by Francois Villon, 15th century French poet, described by Wikipedia as a poet, thief, and vagabond. It was famous for its refrain, Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? This was translated by Dante Gabriel Rossetti as Where the Snows of Yesteryear, and was mangled, it's often used, it was mangled even in Inglorious Bastards. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? Where the snows of yesteryear, or hula hoops, or greaser hair. Incidentally, this is going to be, I have a book coming out of these, with a lot of cartoons, and this is going to be, they're all going to be illustrated with my little cartoony things. Where the snows of yesteryear, or hula hoops, or greaser hair, miles or bird blowing the blues, the jet set and those Pan Am stews, hot pants or the bubble dress, the Bader Meinhof, the SDS, moon rocks red, pet rocks, rockets red glare, Italian scooters everywhere, mood rings, love beads or condomania, sunny and chair to entertain you, could you dish up nouvelle cuisine, master of fresh pinball machine, can you do the frug, the jerk, the twist, were you on Liz or Susie's list, but that I think is quite enough of rootling through the thrifts for stuff, forget the easy memorabilia, I want to thrill you, chill you, kill you, so follows we make the scene. The race for the four minute mile, see the pyramids along the Nile, Audrey Hepburn spiffing style, Carmen Miranda in a tropic isle, Bobby Short at the Carlisle, Woof, to the dark half of the dial. This may take a little while. Jane Mansfield in a speeding motor, Vic Morrow underneath a rotor, Mark Chapman outside the Dakota, Robert Maxwell does a floater, J. Edgar Hoover's files and bile, Squeaky from at the Manson trial, O.J. Simpson in denial. The way that Enron made that pile, Bernie Madoff's tiny smile. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? We know just where those folks have gone. Where have the war reporters gone? A bottle of dewers, your olive vetti, your boat is waiting at the jetty. Brash mercenaries at chartered plane, you're off doing that dumb stuff again. Biafra checkpoints, Lebanon, there you're a bozo with a gun, you're an action hack, you're Superman. Now magazines are drained and wan. Nobody's calling you at dawn. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? Where are the snows of yesteryear? For instance, la vie littéraire. What happened to the literati who'd flocked to a George Plimpton party? The feisty writers of the lanes beating out each other's brains. Kurt Vonnegut and Irwin Shaw, Norman Truman, absent gore. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? Where have New York's last writers gone? Off to tenure, every one. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? Have the photographers all gone? Ask Henri Cartier-Bresson, Irving Penn, Dick Abaddon, Bailey Duffy, Donovan, Helmut Newton, Guy Baudin, and ask who Mary Ellen Marks, three toucher is, wait for the sparks. Don McCullen, Jim Nactway, Photoshop wiped your world away. We've pixelated verite. Now phones take pictures everywhere. All that is solid melts into air. Where are the snows of yesteryear? By the way, all this is solid belts and is a direct quote from Mark, Karl Marx's first communist and uh, communist. Um, where are the ladies, where the babes of times gone by? Chin chin pudding, here's mud in your eye, make yourself comfy, sweetie by. Stunning dress, honey, wanted to look even more. Stunning lying on my bedroom floor, that always got the room in a roar. The sun cast set, the roll in the hay, the cows away, please won't you stay. Hiding the salami, fun games to play. Mais où sont les dames du ton jadis? And do they still remember me? Okay, now we're in Italy, the Dolce Vita, the Benito, an MGM starlet in the Palazzo, the paparazzi and the go, go, go. Scandals erupt in El Specchio, and suddenly it's Roma Adio. Mais où sont les neiges d'antan? Where have the Playboy princes gone? So it's off to London, Babylon, where we have reinvented fun. No more war, but lots more pot. A rich girl in a Fulham squat. Peter Sellers and Sophia in Elvira's Trattoria. Michael Caine and Terence Stamp dine at Annabelle's Dancer Tramp. Art and fashion both go pop while the last of empires going under. Keith Moon, Sid Barrett and Brian Jones, no more rolling for that stone. Have all the birds of Britain flown? What of soul was left, I wonder, when the swinging had to stop? Ciao, Manhattan, we're Euro trash. You need class and we need cash. Late afternoons in Fiorucci, Plato's retreat for Hoochie Coochie, Mortimer's and Jackie O, El Morocco studio, the VIP room waits below. What happened to that snow we know? So the drifting snow snows of memory, twin towers appear in front of me, 
The Twin Towers not of Tolkien, but Twin Towers built for businessmen. That time on earth too big, too dumb, just skyline hogs on the waterfront, perfect for Philippe Petit's stunt, then they were blown to kingdom come. By death and grief and fear defined, two perfect forms, hope and despair, float suspended in the mind, glimmering in our darkening air. So it's back to you, François Villon, poet, thief, vagabond, and con. It's fine for to sign for les, it's fine to sign for les neiges d'antan. What we'd really like to know is will we see tomorrow's snow, and will there be tomorrow's snow? Well, thank you. Okay. Now this is. Um, I happen to think, by the way, that the. Tea Party. I don't know why everyone speaks so badly of the Tea Party, and so this is a little piece in praise of the Tea Party. Some things I know. Some claim that the president belongs. This is the one I want to go up on YouTube just before the election. Some claim that the president belongs to one of the wickeder Chinese tongs. Some insist he's paid by the Vatican or Google by way of Burning Man. Some say he's a huge Al Qaeda fan, or he's been training from youth with the Taliban, or that William Morris planned his ascent, or the Goldman Sachs made him president, or that he was groomed by Actors' Equity, or the Ford Model Agency, or the Church of Scientology, or the IMF, or the KGB. Sheer fallacies, follies, pure fantasy. Just ask yourself this say, have you ever seen Satan and the president in a room together? His henchmen will say that's coincidence and true of some other presidents, but beware of that devilish subtlety. Everything's crystal clear to me. Some other countries, what I'm doing is alternating, slightly loopy, but with sheer madness. Some other concerns I'd like to share, you've seen those baldies everywhere. They're easy to spot since they mostly wear black. Not ordinary folk who've lost their hair, that's an innocent natural lack. But those shiny domes whose superior stare, all artsy-fartsy, nose in the air, twinkly-toed and debonair, well, they have baldy scientists who know how to train your hair to feed messages straight to your brain. Then zap, you're a zombie, a veggie, a pod, on your knees, adoring a baldy god. They're hatching their plans in secrecy, but everything's crystal clear to me. I may not matter too much to you, being that I'm not smart or famous or rich. You may discover before we're through that I can be one difficult son of a bitch. You see, we're a million-headed man. Each of us thinks a bit differently. But every one of us knows of the plan to keep us in our place indefinitely. That's their selfish mentality. But we'll know when the time is ripe to make a move, get up on our feet and take back what belongs to us. Then we'll break the shackles of so-called security, incinerate the NEA, and lock those so-called artists away who are trying to turn our children gay, incarcerate the sex industry, redefine civil liberty. Oh, there's treats in store for you and me. Everything's crystal clear to me. When aliens from beyond the stars thought to check out the human race, they knew they would need a welcoming space, a dive you can find just about any old place, where they can probe our, part, probe our parts at a leisurely pace. So they're here, disguised as Irish bars. Those shamrocks and harps are decoys designed by an evil galactic mastermind. As I'm sitting here over Jameson or three, everything's crystal clear to me. Global warming's a ludicrous lie. Listen on up and I'll tell you just why. Would the good Lord have given us motor cars without safe supplies of affordable gas? No birds in the forest, no fish in the lakes. Their numbers are lies, their pictures are fakes. Those warmers are in a conspiracy. Everything's crystal clear to me. And suppose I'm a fraction out on this. You're going to burn twice, but I'm heading for bliss. Our names are written in a golden book. A friend of a friend of a friend took a look. They, the book is in a cavern board in the mountain where our nukes are stored, awaiting the call of an angry lord. I have this on the highest authority, so everything's crystal clear to me. I think one light, light-hearted, actually this is serious, is a light-hearted one. Uh, it's called Bad Shoes Blues. Sing the bad shoes blues, it was an offer I couldn't refuse, nothing but my self-respect to lose. Now I've got the bad shoes blues. This is actually autobiographical. The song's not for twats, they know what's what and just what goes with their Manolos and Jimmy shoes. This is for guys who aren't too wise, whose eyes are on snooze when they choose their shoes, who've got the bad shoes blues. I've drawn the line at chiseled toes and improbable chemical glows and black and white brogues and no, 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 no's and I've been shoe shopping in Beverly Hills where I bought some bright red espadils. Back in the day in San Antonio, Tony Lama was the place to go. 
I bought some cowboy boots, black vinyl, bright. For that special occasion, a society night that just might end in a fight. A Mount Lebanon warlord, Christian, not Drews, gave me a pair of his very own shoes, soft peanut leather and an excellent fit. I took off the tassels, but they still weren't it. I've got trainers of extreme design, an ultra-aerodynamic line, so perfectly right if I was training to run at the speed of light. Otherwise, there's little excuse. It's just bad shoes, blues. Do I hear heels clicking? Are they coming my way? Is that clip clip clopping on a nearby highway? Is that a tap tap tapping up in the sky? Sounds like they'd be here by and by. Sounds to me just like good shoes. Shoes that'll take me wherever I choose so I can stop singing the bad shoes blues. Okay. Now, now I thought I might read a few little bits from this book. You know what, my glasses are extremely weak. Uh, okay, I'm actually going to begin at the beginning. Not everybody's memories of those years are as clear as spring water, but Antonio de Portago can summon up a specific evening of Studio 54 as clearly as it was running through a projector. De Portago, a French countess by heritage, a chanteuse with a punk band, The Operators, by calling was sitting at a balcony table. There were a few sofas, and you could rest, she says. We were a whole group. There was Elsa Martinelli, Helmut Berger, you know who was in The Damned, Mick Jagger, uh, one of the Neocoses, a girl from Manila. The balconies were halfway up the Metamorphose Theatre and, and Quondam TV studio. On either side, people furtively sidled into the infamous unisexual bathroom, not necessarily to pee. Beneath was the dance floor, pulsating with the beat of disco, which is very close to that of the human heartbeat, where dancers, washed in the surf of sound, dappled and splashed by light, shed the dull gravitational tug of quotidian life and lost themselves in what was at once a voyeuristic jostle, like a fairground, in a domain of the self-absorbed, like a ballet for prima donnas only. Over the dance floor, tubes stuffed with light bulbs, Flash Gordon star, were rising and descending, and how yet the spoon made its rhythmic journey to the insatiable nose of the man in the moon, discharging a, a fizz of light. The photographer says the club was thronged with the studio menagerie that might that night. She can, I'm sorry, these glasses are not... I, I forgot my good glass. Um, she cannot remember the precise cast list, but it certainly must have included uh, heavy squads of toffs and tuxedos and evening dresses, plenty of pretty preppy girls and boys, studio employees, the waiters and bus boys bouncing around, bare-chested and sneakers and gym shorts, and, of course, the, the camera bait. Again, of course, the camera bait... The camera bait, those whose pictures showed up in the Post, the News, People and magazines worldwide, would, would, would certainly that evening have included uh, themselves also other famous faces. And there would have been uh, predictables like Truman Capote, Rudolf Noriev and the, uh, and the starlet of the moment. But beings who looked truly out of context as though they had winged in from a different movie like a Republican senator in a heavy grey suit. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a real problem. Does anyone have stronger glasses than mine, by any chance? Does anyone have 200s, for instance? Um, this is very poorly planned of mine. I'm really sorry. You, you, I'll, I'll, I'll plow on. Just excuse me. Ah, oh, let, let, let me just try. How much? Oh, no, I, I wouldn't even be able to see the book with that. 